The World Health Organization, WHO office in Nigeria, says coronavirus COVID-19 is not a death sentence. The UN Health Agency commended the country's health workers for the feat while advising people to say no to hugging at Easter and adopt nodding as a way of greeting. Joining us via Skype is Dr. Ugunna Wankwo, Chairman of the Christian Medical and Dental Association of Nigeria, Calabar Chapter. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, thank you for, for giving me the audience. Good morning, all. Good morning. Um, what's the situation in Calabar like in terms of the welfare of workers and the general compliance with all the restrictions put in place as we celebrated Easter? Well, um, as you know, currently, um, Calabar or Cross River State does not yet have any case of um, the COVID-19 disease. And so generally, everything, um, the health workers are being prepped up for um, in preparation against and um, easy identification of cases and other things. So um, compared to Lagos, uh, Buja, and some other cities that currently already have cases, um, Calabar doesn't. So it's more of preparation and trainings and all of that and um, getting the whole health system ready just in case um, such um, comes around. Okay, let's talk more generally about the welfare of health workers. What is the international standard pre-COVID-19 and how have we fared against that standard measurement? Um, thank you for that question. You know, um, when they talk about the welfare of health workers, there are some key things we need to understand under the back, I mean, in terms of that light. First of all, health workers generally is made up of all the people that are associated in terms of bringing about the optimum health for the people. And generally, health workers are, if I should say, a lot more global in terms of their reach. So um, take, for instance, doctors and nurses. Um, they, there's only a global supply and a global demand for such health workers. So um, no country is an island of itself in terms of that. So when you talk about the welfare in particular, the, the rationale, part of the rationale why you have to be very, very um, interested in welfare of health workers is because um, the welfare determines whether they will remain in your place or not, or whether they will leave your country or not. So um, when you look at it before the COVID-19, um, in terms of um, our country, Nigeria, you find out that we had a lot of missing gaps. And I would um, illustrate with um, some key events that have happened in my own life, um, I even growing up the ranks to up to this moment, OK? Um, when I was um, a much younger um, doctor, um, we were working in a hospital, and some of our healthcare workers, including doctors, nurses, all the whole cadres of um, the health um, team um, came down with um, Lassa fever. Unfortunately, most of those our colleagues didn't make it. Now, at their death, it was so shocking what happened next. I mean, their salaries were stopped. Um, no compensation was actually given or stated. And in fact, quite recently, if you can remember, even um, our dear doctor, Adedevo, that just um, died um, during the Ebola crisis, for instance, if you notice carefully, even if it is a, a, a national award or something quite big to recognize the, the, the sacrifices the health workers are making. So at times, the welfare is not also just in terms of the financial, but it has to also include the non-financial. And if you look at international standards in most places, I mean, like now that we are talking of COVID-19, if you look at many cities, you can see a narrative around trying to raise up the standards that health workers are doing great. But here in our country, 
Um, if you've noticed, some of the statements and even some of the posturing that has been made towards health workers has not really been very, very helpful. Yeah, yeah yes. Let's, I mean, let's talk about that for a bit. Uh, some health workers, we'll get to the death of the um, uh, Dr. Aliyu Yakubu in a, in a minute, but let's look at the protest by some health workers on Friday in Ilori Choir State um, to, about what they describe as the risky working condition at their workplace amid the coronavirus uh, pandemic. And I also read something the other day about the fact that inbuilt amount health workers at various levels receive as hazard allowance hasn't changed, even uh, with the pandemic that we have at hand. You were referencing comments by, I, pre I presume, the Minister of uh, uh, um, Health, where he said that he wasn't aware whether health workers were getting um, any um, Allow health, I mean, hazard allowance. Many have described this comment as devoid of empathy. What really is your concern about all of these development when it comes to um, um, hazard allowance? Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, you know, uh, we are currently at war in terms of the COVID-19. It's almost like a war situation. And the soldiers, the generals, everybody is all the people at the front line, the healthcare workers. As we know, um, healthcare workers currently, their risk based on what they do is far higher than the general population. And so when people do to, I mean, as a reason of their occupation is more exposed, it is expected that they should get some sort of both motivation and even like um, an insurance or compensatory, um, you know, package. That currently is what has not been. And this is, I mean, is an issue that has been along in the sector, which also boils down to the point that if you look at what is the financial, I mean, the, the way of financing health in the country. Health has been receiving um, budgetary allocation of less than 5% over time. And compared to what is expected, which is over 15%, and even for some countries, 40%. That is at the crux of the matter as well. Now that this crisis has come, I think it's very, very important that we realize that the healthcare workers, wherever they are, irrespective of the work, work they are doing, 